Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Welcome back again. The Lord God of heaven will bless you and favor you in Jesus' name. Let's go to the word of God this morning. Amen. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for yet another opportunity for us to gather in your presence. The Bible says, in your presence, is fullness of joy, and at your right hand is pleasures forevermore. Lord, we are in your presence. We feel, I sense your spirit here already. Lord, let your joy follow. Let the pleasures of your presence follow. You said they go from strength to strength. Everyone that appeared before God in Zion. Lord, let strength be released unto everyone on this call, on this service, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. And I declare and declare that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to open the eyes of the blind, and to turn men from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins, and inheritance among them that are sanctified by faith that is in me. And as the word of God goes forth this morning, the power of God goes with it to bring to pass all that has been declared, all that I will yet declare, in Jesus' mighty name. This service we are filled with joy, unspeakable, full of glory. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen and amen. You're welcome again to the House of Light Assembly. You're welcome to Tola. The Lord God of heaven bless you. In Jesus' mighty name. We have, been, we have begun a series of teaching um, on the topic, Finding Peace. At the beginning of this month, first I also want to thank God for giving you and I the grace and the privilege to see the last Sunday of the month. To his name be all the glory. And today is Pentecost. Pentecost, the 50th day. Uh, and Acts chapter 2 verse 1 to 47 will be fulfilled in our lives today. During this message, expect a sudden charge from heaven. Expect the Spirit of God to fall upon you like never before. And so shall it be in Jesus' mighty name. We started this series of teachings uh, the first Sunday of the month on finding peace. And we took our text from 2 Chronicles chapter 1 from verse... 2 Chronicles chapter 15 from verse 1 to 15. That's the anchored scripture. Uh, let me try to summarize the teaching since the last few weeks. Uh, we talked about the fact that God is the God of peace. We said Jesus is the Prince of Peace. We said genuine peace comes from God. We said it is possible to have all around rest. That is peace in every area of your life. And we said there are four major areas you need to establish peace. We talked about peace in your spirit. And we linked that to trust in God. Isaiah 26 verse 3. The Bible says that we keep in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on thee. Because he trusted in thee. Thou will keep in peace. Because he trusted in thee. So we talked about peace in your spirit. We linked that to trust. Peace in your spirit. We linked that to trust. Isaiah 26 verse 3. And we also talked about peace in your mind and your soul. We linked that to hope in God. We linked that to hope in God. We also talked about hope boosters. We talked about hope boosters. Uh, last Sunday we talked about peace in your, in your body. Peace in your body. Peace in your health. And we linked that to the spirit of joy. You know the Bible says in Proverbs 17 verse 22. It said a merry heart doeth good like a medicine. But a broken spirit tried the bones. A merry heart. Do it good like a medicine. So when you have joy in your heart. You have peace in your heart. You have peace in your body. Amen. We talked about joy boosters. And joy killers. The things that can kill your joy. Very quickly. Uh, please if you haven't watched. Or if you haven't listened to that message. They are all on our YouTube page. Please go and watch them. And they will bless you immensely. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Today we want to wrap up with the fourth aspect. Of an area where we all need peace. And this is the financial peace. 
financial peace, peace in your finances. Amen. Amen. Yes, I'm going to be talking about money today, but it's not all about money. Peace in your finances. Peace in your finances. And my text this morning is from Psalm 23. The famous Psalm, Psalm 23, verse 1 to 6. I'm sure we can all recite that from the top of our head, but I'll read that as we get into the Word of God this morning. Psalm 23, verse 1 to 6. The Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Key scripture, the Lord is my shepherd, therefore I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Hmm? He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Praise God. Financial peace. That scripture we read talks about financial peace. From the first verse, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. You know that he was talking about the peace that God gives when he is your shepherd. And what are some of the peace? He makes you to lie down green pastures. He makes you to lie down in abundance. He leads you beside still waters. He gives you peace with it. He restores your soul. He le you begin to read, he prepares a table before you in the presence of your enemies. That talks about abundance too. Amen. So God wants us to have financial peace. God wants us to have peace in our finances. Amen. You say, why is this important? Why is this important? You know, financial peace has a way to affect the peace in your spirit, in your soul, and in your body. Yes, it is that powerful. Financial peace, when you are hungry, there's a way you are hungry, you can't pray. Eh? There's a way you are troubled with debt. The landlord and the, 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 your, 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 your lenders are calling you, your soul will be troubled. Your soul, you will, you will be able to sleep. And there's a way poverty can hit you, you become sick. So if you don't have financial peace, it can affect all the three areas of peace we've talked about the last three weeks, the last four Sundays. Amen. So it is very important that we understand it, we talk about it, and by the Spirit of God, gain mastery over it. One mess up in your financial life or disability of your finances can affect your spirit man. It can affect your soul. And it can affect your body. But that will not be our portion. In the name of Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. Also today is our Pentecost service. And in Pentecost we celebrate the power of God. We celebrate the power of resurrection. Amen. And you know that one of the things that Christ died for. Was to give us riches. Christ died that we may be rich. Don't believe any lie of the devil. Revelation chapter 5 verse 12 states that emphatically. It says, Say with a loud voice, What is the lamb that was slain to receive power? After power it was riches. After power was received, the next thing was riches. And then wisdom, and then strength, and then honor, and glory and blessing. So riches are important. After power was taken from the devil, God Take, took the riches. You know, the devil said that the kingdom of this world has been given to me. It was true. It was telling the truth. In Matthew chapter 4, when he was tempting Jesus, you know, uh, to jump down, to buy down and worship him, he said that the kingdom of this world and all these riches has been given to me. And that's true because Adam gave it to him. But when Jesus rose from the dead, the second thing he went to get from the devil was the riches. The riches. The wealth of this world. So it belongs to us as the children of God. It is our heritage. Amen. It is our right. It is our inheritance. Wealth, riches, riches, riches. And wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. So riches is one of the benefits of redemption. Riches is one of the benefits of redemption. It is God's will that you and I prosper. Third John verse 2 says, I wish above all things, I wish above, I wish many things for you, but above them, these three things, that you prosper and be in health, 
even as your soul prospers, that you prosper, that you do well, that you have wealth, that you become wealthy mm, and live in health, even as your soul prospers. That is the top three priority of God's will for mankind. Prosperity, all round of it. What else? The Bible tells me that God is happy when you and I have lots of money. God is happy when we are wealthy. Amen. Psalm 35 verse 27. Psalms chapter 35 and verse 27. The Bible says this very clear. It says, let them rejoice. Psalm 35 verse 27. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. When God's people are living in abundance, God is happy. When God's people are living, Psalm 35 verse 27, please. Psalm 35 verse 27, not 37, 27. Psalm 35 verse 27, God is pleased when we have money, when we prosper financially. Amen. It, you know, people, are, people might be thinking, oh, pastor, have you not, have you not backslidden? No, no. You know, there was always said uh, money is the root of all evil. No, the Bible did never said money is the root of evil. There is no way in the Bible that says money is the root of evil. Go and search your Bible, go and do your research. What the Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 10 is that the love of money is the root of all evil. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 10, not money but the love of money. When you love money to an extent that money controls you. When you love money to the extent that you can do anything and everything to get money. That is where the problem lies. First Timothy chapter 6 verse 10. He said, for the love of money is the root of all evil. He said, which while some have, have coveted after. They have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. It is the love of money that is the root of evil. It's not money in itself. Praise God. You can link all the evil in this world to money. Mm -hmm. The young man that was just killed by a police officer kneeling on his neck. The police officer probably did that because he wanted the race. He wanted to be popular. Maybe they gave them money for the number of people they, they, they capture. Or the number of people they give tickets. Or the number of people they arrest. Mm? All motivated by money. Mm? The young man was crying. Was begging. He was telling him, I can't breathe. Please, I can't breathe. The man still knelt on him. I wonder what kind of promotion he was expecting from that. I wonder what kind of financial raise he was expecting from that. The love of money. When the love of money does not let you think straight. Does not let you have compassion for humanity. Does not let you fear God. Does not let you respect and honor God. That is where you have gotten into trouble. The love of money is the root of all evil. The love of is the root, the root cause of all evils on the earth. Praise God. Alright, this morning I'm going to be giving us practical steps to financial prosperity as well as teaching you how, how God blesses. Practical steps to financial prosperity and how God blesses. You know, sometimes we pray, oh God, bless me, bless me, bless me. Are you able to identify the blessing when it comes? God, bless me, bless me, bless me. I hope you are not looking up to the skies to see dollar bills falling. If dollar bills fall anywhere, please call me. I want to be there. Amen. Call me, call me. Find me wherever I am. I want to be there. Anywhere you see dollar bills falling from the sky, I want to be there. Or anywhere you see any tree that grows money, call me. I will climb the tree. Amen. <laughs> yes, I will climb the tree. But that does not happen. Amen. So we need to understand how God blesses. We need to understand how God blesses. Amen. So let's get into it. Practical steps to prosperity. You see, let me not lie to you. The primary way of financial prosperity is through giving. Yes. You may not like it. That doesn't change the fact. Giving is the primary way to financial blessing. Giving is the way to financial prosperity. And I know it's counterintuitive. You know, the Bible says there's one that giveth and prospereth. There's one that, that withholdeth, 
beyond necessary and that tended to poverty. So how can I become rich when I give <laughs> what I have? How can I become rich when I give what I have? That's why the Bible says that the, the, the ways of Christ is foolishness to them that are outside, to them that are lost, to them that are perishing. Hmm? The way of the cross, the way of the cross is foolishness. But I tell you the truth, the primary way of, of blessing, of financial prosperity is giving. You have to be a giver to prosper financially. Luke chapter 6 verse 38. Luke chapter 6 verse 38. The Bible says this. It said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken over. Shaking together and running over. Shall men give into your bosom. He said, for with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Give and it shall be given to you. Eh? Very, very practical. Let me show you six ways of giving. Six ways of giving. You know, I'm going to be telling you something very new today because I learned that myself the last few weeks. I used to teach five primary ways. The Holy Spirit gave me one more. So I'm going to be exposing that to us today. Amen. Let's go through that very quickly. The first primary way of giving is your tithe. And your tithe is 10% of your gross income. 10% of your gross income. That is your income before taxes or any other thing. When we honor God first, he puts us first in his heart. When we honor God above everything else, above every other thing, he honors us, he honors us back. The Bible says, Jesus speaks, he said, come near to me and I will draw near to me and I will draw near unto you. Amen. So, Titan is the primary way of giving. That is 10% of our gross income before taxes. Amen. Before the government touches your money, everything that you received, give God a 10% temp, a, a of it. Give God a 10% of it. Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 to 11. Very popular verse of scripture. Uh, a lot of people uh, are controversial about it, but that scripture is not controversial and can never be edited. It has been written before you and I were born, and it will be there long after we are gone. God's word stands sure. Malachi chapter 3, verse 8 to 11 it says, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. <laughs> so when you don't give tight, you are a thief. You are a thief. You are a thief. Only, that's what they call it in my language. You are a thief. You are a robber. You are a robber. You are a thief. It says, with a man of God, yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, wherein have we robbed thee? It says, in tithe and offering. If you don't give your, if you don't pay your tithe and you don't give your offering, you are a thief. You are a robber. And the curse of the Lord is in the house of the thief. It's a dangerous thing. Look at verse 9. It says, you are cursed with a curse. When you are a thief, you are cursed with a curse. Huh? You are cursed with a curse. It says, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Now, here's the solution. Here's the way out. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house. And prove me now, here we said the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Bring all the tithe to my, to my storehouse, said the Lord. So if you don't give your tithe or you don't pay offering, if you don't, I'm sorry, you pay your tithe and you give offering, okay? The, the payment is a requirement, the giving is free will, okay? If you don't pay your tithe, and give your offering, you are a thief. You are a thief. Leviticus chapter 27 verse 30. The Bible makes you understand that all the tithe of the land belongs to God. Mm. Leviticus chapter 27 verse 30. Verse 30. Leviticus chapter 27 verse 30. It says, all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land, or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. So don't you dare take what belongs to God. Don't you dare what, what, what is holy unto the Lord. Amen. So don't play with it. If you, are, if you mess with your tight, things will be tight for you in life. 
It's the truth. Because the curse of the Lord is in the house of the thief. Amen. So don't mess with God's money. Don't mess with that which is the portion of the Lord. Tight even your business income. Tight even your church income. Tight even your, your scholarship. Any free money, any gift, you must tie. If not, you are a thief. You are a robber. And you are under a curse. That will not be you from today anymore. In the name of Jesus Christ. Well, some may say that Titan is Old Testament. They are liars. Hmm? They have been consumed with the love of money. They can't live 10%. And some of them, the government charges them 20% or some ridiculous percentage. But 10% is the problem for them. And they come up with all forms of schemes and gimmicks that Titan is Old Testament. That's not true. That is Titan in the New Testament. Hebrews chapter 7 verse 1 to 7. Let us know. Titan. Titan, he said in verse 7, he said, without contradiction, the less is better, is blessed of the better. He says in verse 8, and here men die, receive tight, but there, that is in heaven, God, he, God, receiveth them of whom it is witness that he liveth. So, Titan is not a, an Old Testament commandment, it is a new and living <laughs> Testament commandment, amen. So, you must tight. You must start. I don't have any pity for a non titers Because they know what to do and they don't do it. I don't have any compassion for anyone who knows that Titan is the way forward but still don't. In fact, when they come to beg for money, I ask them, are you a titer? If you are not a titer, go away. You are a thief. And I don't want to be associated with a thief. I don't want to be associated with a robber. So the primary way of giving is Titan. Amen. I have five more and I'm going to rush that very quickly. Praise God. If we're not able to finish this teaching today, we'll continue again in our Wednesday service because I want you to get it. I want you to understand it. I want you to be impacted with this. Mm -hmm. The spirit of giving. Number one, your tithe. Number two is giving to your parents. Giving to your parents. Whether it's biological or spiritual parents or both. Biological or spiritual or both or foster. Foster parents, biological parents, spiritual parents, or all of the above. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 3. The Bible says this. It says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. It says, Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. Oh, and look at the promise. That it may be well with you and that thou mayest live long on the earth. That it may be well with you. That you may prosper. That it may be well with you. Give to your parents. One of the ways we honor our parents is by giving to your parents. The Bible never said any amount. Make sure you give. Consistently. Make sure you give. As the Lord gives you grace. Make sure you give in increasing terms. Amen. Don't be giving them 10 naira. 25 years ago and giving them 10 naira now 25 years later. Amen. So give to your parents. Number three way, very quickly, is give to your prophets. Give to your prophets. Give to your pastors. Church members, listen, you must give to your pastor to experience another dimension of open heavens. God is not begging you. God is commanding you that you give so your prophets, your pastors, the ones that labor over your soul, the ones that labor over your spirit. First Kings chapter 17 verse 8 to 24 tells of the story of a woman called the widow of Zarephath. The Lord sent Elijah there, Elijah there that the widow might feed him. Hmm? 1 Kings chapter 17. Let's read that together very quickly. 1 Kings chapter 17 uh, verse 8. We won't read the whole thing. But please write the scriptures down. And go and read them. Go and read them. 1 Kings chapter 17 from verse 8 to 24. The Lord sent Elijah to the widow of Zarephath. And the widow... 
to, to go and the widow went to feed him. Now, let me express something here because it brings a very good point. The Lord sent Elijah to a widow. Hmm. Not only to a widow, but to a poor widow. Not only to a poor widow, but to a poor widow with a child. And the woman said, I have only one meal. And I was planning to eat it and my child and die. But Elijah still requested for the meal. So some of you may say this, that what I have is not enough. Why would I or how would I still give what I have? Or how would I still give some of what I have? What you have is not enough. But the secret in the kingdom to having more than enough is to give what you have. Amen. Look at how Psalm 126 puts it. Psalm 126. Is somebody being blessed by God's word this morning? Some people, some people may say, my salary is not enough for me alone. Why should I now start giving in all these three forms? Or all these six forms you're about to say. All these six forms. Mind you, the Bible never tells you the exact amount to give. It just said give. So start from where you are. Start from your level, the level you know you can maintain consistently for a long time. Start from where you are. It might not be much, but you are obeying scriptures and God will honor you. Look at how Psalm 126 puts it. It says in verse 5 and 6, it says, They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. <laughs> it said, He that goeth forth and with bearing precious seed shall doubtless come against with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. They that sow in tears, what you have may not be enough for you, but you still sow it, you are sowing in tears. And the Bible says you will reap in joy. Amen. Oh, I feel that. I feel that. I feel the power of God with that. Those that sow in tears, those that it costs something to sow, to give, the Bible says those people will reap back in joy. It said like those that go forth and weep in bearing precious seed. There are some times that what you give to the Lord almost wants to make you cry. It is very precious to you like that meal in 1 Kings chapter 17. That one meal that widow had was all she had. She was going to eat it and her child and expect death to kill them through hunger. But the Bible says this, and God has been faithful to his word. He says, he that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. That is God committing himself that if you give the one you have with, with, with weeping and, 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 and pain, you will have abundance. <laughs> Look at what happened to that widow of Zarephath in John chapter, uh, 1 Kings chapter 17. Elijah told her. Elijah said, Oh, as long, verse 14, he said, For tears the Lord, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day the Lord send the rain upon the earth. And so it was for the woman. The barrel of meal never wasted, neither did the cruise of oil fail. So when you feel that what you have is not enough for you to do all of these things, still give it. I know it's painful. I know it doesn't make sense. But that's how to get out of the, 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 the prison of lack. You must give. You must give if you want to experience financial prosperity. Amen. So give to your prophet. Number five, give to those around you that need help. Charity giving. Praise God. Charity giving. Charity giving. Psalm 41, verse 1 to 3. Proverbs 19, 17. Proverbs 28, 17. And Proverbs 3.27. Charity given. Proverbs 41. Psalms 41 verse 1 to 3. The Bible says, Blessed is he that considereth the poor, 
The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive. And he, and he shall be blessed upon the earth. And that, and thou will not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou will make all his bed in a sickness. Amen. Give to those that are in need around you. Proverbs 19 verse 17. Proverbs chapter 19 verse 17. Let's see what God's word says there. He said, He that had pity upon the poor lended unto the Lord, and that which he had given will he pay him again. He that lended, that, that pitied the poor lended unto the Lord, and that which he had given, God will pay him again. So there's no giving that the, to the poor that does not come back to you. Hmm? It comes back in full measure, pressed down, shaking together and running over. Let's see Proverbs 27 or 28 verse 8, 17. Proverbs 28 verse 17. Alright, it says, Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Proverbs 20, 28 verse 17. A man, oh, I think I lost that scripture. Amen. Praise God. Anyway, so giving to the poor, giving to those around you is, oh, Proverbs 28 verse 27. I'm sorry. Proverbs 28, 27. It says, he that giveth to the poor shall not lack. Proverbs 28, 27. I'm sorry, not, not verse 17. He said, he that giveth to the poor shall not lack, but he that hideth his, face, his eyes shall have many a curse. He that giveth unto the poor shall not lack, but he that hideth his eyes shall have many a curse. Number what now? Number five. The fifth way of giving is giving to your family members. Oh yes. That's a very important one. You must give to your to members of your family. Charity, they say, begins at home. Charity begins at home. You cannot give everyone in the world money or gifts and not give members of your family. The Bible puts it this way. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 8. The Bible says that uh, but if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own household, he had denied the faith, and is worse than an infidel, given to members of your family. Many, many, many people are guilty of this. They can give to everybody else, but the man or the woman that they are living with, or the children that God has blessed them with, they don't give nothing. They don't give nothing. They overlook them. They say, oh, you have abundance of things. But those children may be needing something very desperately. That wife, that husband may be looking forward to something. Give to members of your family. Give them as much as you can. To the level of grace God gives you per time. Give to members of your family. Give to your wife. Give to your children. Give to your husband. Give to people living around you. Amen. The Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 18. He said, verse 17, he said, Charge them that are rich in this world. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 17 to 18. He said, Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, but trust, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. Verse 18. That they do good. That they be rich in good works. Ready to distribute. Willing to communicate. You must be willing to communicate with members of your household. You must be willing to communicate. It's not verbal communication we're talking about now. We're talking about giving and receiving. It's a form of communication. You know, just like verbal communication is when you speak, somebody hears, 
and the person responds back the same way you give to a person and the person responds back there must be communication between husband and wife there must be communication between father and children there must be communication between mother and children there must be communication with the entire household you must be willing to communicate giving to members of your household the bible says we should bear the burden of each other we should bear one another's burden so let us be active in that let us be active in bearing one another's burden let us help each other out don't see your spouse struggling financially and go and be keeping some money in some useless savings account somewhere no let us help each other out let us bear one another's burdens. I believe Galatians chapter 6 verse, verse 2 or, or thereabouts. Bearing one another's burden. Be sensitive to the needs of your spouse. Be sensitive to the needs of your children. Yes, Galatians 6 verse 2. Bear each other's burden. Bear each other's burden. Be sensitive to their needs. Don't watch your spouse wear one bedroom slippers for 12 years don't watch your spouse you know struggle don't don't watch your wife keep that hair for six months amen give her money tell her to go and change the hair <laughs> don't change the head but change the hair amen give don't watch her put on the same wig you know be sensitive let us bear each other's burdens amen first peter chapter 4 verse 10 the Bible says, and as every man has received the gifts, even so minister one to another. Let us learn to minister to one another. Let us learn to minister to one another. It says, as good, as good, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Let us learn to minister to one another. Minister to one another. Very, very important. Very, very, very important. The, the problem in some homes is not the devil. The problem in some marriages is not the forces of darkness. The problem and the pressure in some home is stinginess and ignorance. The man cannot give one cupboard. The woman will not give one dime. The children are just looking at themselves like that. Even amongst children, they must communicate with one another. They must communicate. They must minister one to another. With your siblings. Bear their burdens to the level of grace God has given you. Hmm? As every man has received the gifts, even so minister one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Praise the Lord. Finally, number six. Finally, number six is kingdom advancement. Kingdom advancement. Kingdom advancement. Set aside a portion of your salary to promote the kingdom of God. That's, that's one big advice I want to give you today. A portion of your income, a portion of your earnings, a portion of your profit, set it aside for the promotion of the kingdom of God. How? Either through partnership with a church organization or through projects that are happening in the church or through assistance in anything the church may be involved in. Amen. Set aside a portion of your income, your earnings, your profit, to, keep, to promote the kingdom of God. You know, to promote the kingdom of God. To promote the, 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 the kingdom of God and its righteousness. <laughs> Amen. Partner with kingdom builders. Partner with kingdom giants. Partner with the, 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 the saints of God. Those that are on the missionary field. Amen. Those that are on the on the on, on the on, in the hot zones where the gospel of Christ is being resisted. Set a portion aside to promote the propagation of the kingdom of God. To propagate the gospel of Jesus. To propagate, to give opportunity. To give opportunity for many to be saved. 
Amen. Praise God. Give and set aside a portion of your income for the advancement of the kingdom. In Exodus chapter 25, 26, and 27, we see God asking the children of Israel to bring money, to bring gold, to bring silver for the, for the building of the tabernacle. Exodus chapter 25, Exodus chapter 26, and Exodus chapter 27. When you get home, please read those. Exodus chapter 25 verse, 20, 25, verse 1 to 3. Let's start with that. It says, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, It was the Lord that spake unto Moses. He says, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring me an offering. Every man that giveth it willingly with his heart, ye shall take my offering. And this is offering that ye shall take of them, gold and silver and brass. And the list continued. God particularly requested <clears throat> for some things to build in his tabernacle. To build in his tabernacle. So God can request. But don't wait for him to request that. Be a wise servant. Be a wise child. Be a person of the spirit. Amen. And give a, 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 automatically. Don't wait to be cajoled. Don't wait to be whined. Don't wait to be to be hyped up. Don't wait for anyone to spend 45 minutes before they can get $5 from your pocket. 45 minutes collecting an offering and telling you all the various projects or giving you a list of things that are happening in the church. Can't you see it with your eyes? Can't you see what the church is doing? Can't you see what God is doing through the church? You must set your, your uh, 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 aside a portion of your income, a portion of your earnings, a portion of your profit for the kingdom of God. For the kingdom of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So those are six major ways, six practical ways. I mean, six ways of giving. Amen. Oh boy. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we have not even gotten into the, the, the cross of it. I have here four ways, four practical ways of financial prosperity and giving is just one of them. And I just gave you six points on that giving, amen. Uh, we're going to have to continue this service on Wednesday. Don't miss it for anything. But let's go as far as God will help us go this morning. Praise God. Let me at least deliver the practical steps and then maybe on, on Wednesday, by the grace of God, I'll teach you how God blesses. How God blesses. Amen. How God blesses. All right. The second problem, the second way of 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 of, uh, of prosperity, the second practical steps to prosperity is savings. Okay. So we talked about giving, but the Bible also talked about savings. Proverbs chapter twenty one verse twenty. Proverbs twenty one verse twenty. The Bible says there is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise. But a foolish man spended it all. Eh? Is it in your Bible like that? Eh? Is it in your Bible, Proverbs 21 verse 20? There is treasure, much treasure, to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise. But the foolish man does what? Spend it all. Amen. <laughs> the foolish one spends it all. So when you spend all you have, you are foolish. When you spend all that God blesses you with, it's the Bible that said it. You are a foolish person. In fact, the Bible says again in, in Proverbs chapter 11 verse 24, it says, there is, there is he that scattereth and yet increase it, okay? But there is he that withholded more than meat. See, the Bible is not against you withholding or saving. The Bible is saying there is he that, that withholded more than meat. That is to say that those who are keeping selfishly, those are the ones that it tends to poverty. So the Bible is not against you keeping, but it's against you keeping more than meat. 
To enjoy financial prosperity, you need to be a giver. You need to be a giver. You need to be you need to save also. You need to save also. Not only be a giver, you need to save also. In the world, they tell us that to save, you must save at least twenty uh, at least um a thousand dollars. Amen. A thousand dollars for your um emergency funds. I'm talking of practical ways now. They say we must give a thousand, you must save a thousand dollars for emergency funds because most emergencies are usually less than a thousand dollars based on statistics. So you must have one thousand dollars for the rainy day. Now, there will always be a rainy day, the rainy day will always happen. So you need to be prepared for that. You need to be prepared for that. You need to be prepared for that. Also, you know, in one of the books of the month that I asked us to read. If you haven't read it, by the way, it is called Financial Peace by Dave Ramsey. Financial Peace by Dave Ramsey. So, we must read that book. Please go and get that book. Get the online version, get the ebook, get the audio book. And you will see all of that in there. In that book, they also encourage you to have between three to six months savings. Between three to six months savings of your expenses every month. Okay, so if all your bills and all your gifts and all your givings is $20 a month, you should have at least between $60 to $120 in your savings. Amen. That's how much you can save. That's how much you should save. Amen. So God is not against you saving. God is against you saving more than meat. meat. God is against you saving more than is required. God is against you saving more than is expected. Praise the Lord. Also, we know in Genesis chapter 34, Genesis chapter 41, I'm sorry, Genesis chapter 41, Genesis chapter 41, we are still talking about savings. We're talking about savings here. Genesis chapter 41. Pharaoh had a dream. Pharaoh had a dream. And he could not interpret his dreams. And when Joseph interpreted the dreams. He told him he said. The seven years of plenty is coming. And the seven years of, of famine is coming. He said let Pharaoh do this. Verse 34. And let him appoint officers over the land and take up fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. A fifth is 20%. 20% of everything that enters your hand must be saved. Minimum. 20% of a fifth. That is how Israel, uh, Egypt escaped poverty. Escaped famine in the seven years of lack. 20%. 20%, 20%, a fifth, the principle of a fifth, the principle of 20%. That is how Israel, I mean Egypt, survived the times of famine. So you must make it a part of you. 20% of anything that enters into your hands must not be eaten. When you have a fruit in your hand, there is a seed in your fruit. Don't eat your fruit and eat the seed. Don't eat your fruit and eat the seed. You must learn to save. 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 Praise God. Praise God. So that is the second way of, of practical steps to financial prosperity. The first is giving. The second is savings. Amen. The third is investments. The third is investments. You must invest some of your money. You must learn to invest some of your money. God is not against investments. God is not against you putting money in, in business that will earn you a profit. God is not against you giving some 
corporations or buying stocks in some companies for you to profit. In fact, the Bible puts it this way. In the parable of the talent, in the parable of the talent, in Matthew chapter 25, verse 14 to 30, the Bible says that he gave talent to everyone according to their abilities. Some he gave five, one he gave five, one he gave two, one he gave one. And he said the one that he gave five went and did business, went and traded with what he had and brought in five more. Huh? That's an investment. He traded the five talents that his master gave him. And when his master gave, came, he gave an account and his master commended him. You must learn to invest. You must learn to invest. The same man that was given two talents also came and the master commended him for having traded with the two talents and for getting two more. So God is not against you investing. Some of you may say that, hey, what do I know that I can invest? There are, pen, there are, there are stocks they call penny stocks. And please, if you haven't read the book I, I, I just talked about earlier, please go and read it because I can't explain the whole book in this service. That is why it's part of the books of the month. Financial Peace by Dave Ramsey. Financial Peace by Dave Ramsey. There is, there is, there is, there is, there is, there is something we call penny stocks. A stock is a portion of a company's financial uh, pro asset or property. You know, when you buy a stock in a company, you are buying a part of the company. You are buying ownership, a certain percentage of the company. So there are some people who call penny stocks, stocks that are less than $5 that you can own and over a long time will grow and give you benefits. They are growth stocks, they are mutual funds. You need to get yourself educated in this. God is not against you profiting. God is not against you doing business. God is not against you investing. God wants you to invest like the good servant who has been given a talent and that has that talent in his hand. Praise God. Number four, practical way of, 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 uh, of blessing, and we'll wrap up with this, is getting out of debt. You cannot prosper if you are in debt. You cannot prosper if you are in lack if you are if you are very prone to borrowing to begging if you are a beggar you will always be a servant to the lender if you are a beggar you will always be a servant to the lender the bible puts it this way in deuteronomy chapter 28 deuteronomy chapter 28 let's read verse tw verse 12 Praise God. Is somebody being blessed by God's word this morning? Sorry, we're taking a little bit of a little bit more time. Today's Pentecost. And we must we must we must get this right by the help of the Spirit of God. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 12. The Bible says this way: that the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in the season, and to bless the works of thy hand. And thou shalt lend to many nations, but thou shalt not borrow. Thou shalt not borrow. Thou shalt not borrow. God has given a commandment that we do not borrow. Thou shalt not borrow. Stop begging. Stop borrowing. You cannot prosper when you are a borrower or you are a beggar. Proverbs 22 verse 7 says that the, the, the borrower is servant to his lender. When you live a life of borrowing, I don't care what they discover in you, I give you a discovery card, or whatever, whatever you want to express through American Express. You don't need a credit card. You don't. Scripture tells us that. Proverbs 22 verse 7, it says the, serv the borrower is servant to the lender and you cannot serve God and serve another man you cannot serve God and serve money you cannot serve God and serve mammon you cannot serve God and serve the financial institutions you must choose who you want to serve 
the rich rule it over the poor and the borrower is servant to the lender. Stop borrowing. Pay your debt. Stop borrowing. Pay your debt. So that like Zacchaeus, you can say that any man that I owed, I pay them back. Put yourself on a plan, on a constraint to pay back and stop borrowing. Stop begging. Stop borrowing. Stop begging. If you want to prosper, stop digging your hole. Uh, digging yourself into a hole. If you are in debt, don't dig it deeper. Get out of the hole. Get out of it. And the Lord will bless us in the name of Jesus. Let's bow our heads and give God praise for his word this morning. Let's give him all the glory, Father. We thank you and we bless your holy name for your word that you have sent to us this morning. We receive it with meekness. We receive it with joy. We receive it with faith. In the name of Jesus. Let's ask God for the grace to be doers of his word and not just hearers only, deceiving ourselves. Father, I pray, O oh God, that I will be a doer of your word. I will not be a borrower, I will be a lender. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Let me pray over you, Father. I pray for this one, O oh God, that in the name of Jesus, they shall be Lenders are not borrowers. Financial prosperity is our portion. We shall all have financial peace all the days of our lives. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. The Bible says you shall not borrow. Whether through a credit card or through a person. You shall not borrow. You shall not borrow. That's what the Bible says. So the credit card is not an excuse. You shall not borrow. Deuteronomy 28 verse 12. Praise God. Alright. There might be one or two people under the sound of my voice this morning who wants to make Jesus the Lord and Savior of their lives. Who have not given their hearts to the Lord. I want you to know that a life without Christ is a life full of crisis. Jesus died to receive for us power and riches. But it is for all who have accepted him into his life. He said, many that, for as many as received him, gave him the power to become the sons of God. If you are not a son of God, Christ did not receive anything for you. So instead of riches, you will have poverty. If you don't have Christ in your life, the devourer will eat up your gains. Will eat up your blessings. Will eat your blessings for lunch. So I want to give you an opportunity this morning to give your heart to the Lord. Or perhaps... You have given your heart to the Lord, but you are struggling. You are still finding yourself going back to your sin. To sin, you are still finding yourself involving in all kinds of immorality. It's time to be serious, and I want to pray for you. So, if you are in both categories, please bow your heads as I pray, and say these prayers after me. Say with me, Lord Jesus, I come to you today as a sinner, and I know. That you are the Savior. Please forgive me of my sins. I write my name in the book of life. Wash me and cleanse me. Of my sins. And make me your child again. I believe I am forgiven. I believe I am saved. I believe I am justified. I believe in my heart. And I confess with my mouth. That Jesus is Lord. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Father, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice who have said this prayer. I pray that the same grace that gave them the boldness to come forward, that same grace will keep them. You said in your word that anyone that comes to you, you will not in any way cast back. You will not in any way turn them around. Father, I pray that you will receive these ones and keep them in you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. I pray, O oh God, that they will make it to the end. They will remain rapturable with you. In Jesus' mighty name of prayer. Amen and amen. Praise God. Alright, we're going to continue that teaching on Wednesday. I want to show you how God blesses. How God blesses. We're going to continue that on Wednesday at our Richard service at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Instagram. Right here on Instagram. In the name of Jesus. We're going to take an offering very soon. But uh, I think our timer is counting down on Instagram. 
So I will need to reconnect back and we'll take an offering and I'll provide you. Don't miss it. Don't go away. I'll see you very soon. In Jesus' name. God bless you.